shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. Ah, yeah. I won't fear. With anointing. I'm filled with anointing. My cup runneth over. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. Oh, yeah. I won't fear. And say hallelujah. hallelujah. I am not alone. I am not alone. He's my comfort. He's my comfort. Always holds me close. Always holds me close. Oh, he always guides me.
Good morning. The choir said, there is none like you. You know, we had an um, a old deacon that's not here no more, and he used to always start off devotion by saying, has God been good to anybody? <laughs> Amen. Today I will be reading Psalm 61 in its entirety, and it reads as following. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth I will cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to a rock that's higher than I. For thou hast been my shelter and a strong tower for my enemies. I will abide in the tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou having given me the heritage of those that fear his name. Thou will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before the God forever. I, o, o God, O prepare mercy and truth for me, which, in, which I may preserve forever. So I will sing praise until thy name forever, that I may perform my daily vows. That Psalm 61 is an entirety. May the God add a blessing to the readers and hearers and the doers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. I pray. Lord God, Father, we come to you at the morning to grace this morning, Father, to say thank you. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, before we ask the Lord for anything. Lord, we are thankful just to see another day. Lord, we are thankful, Father, for your unfailing love, mercy, and grace. Lord, we thank you this day, Father, for our daily bread. Lord, we are thankful for our physical bread, Father. Lord, our spiritual bread. And the Father, we are asking you, Lord, to rain down, Father, your Holy Spirit on us, Lord, that they may lead us and guide us. Lord, we are thankful this morning, Father, because, Lord, you chose us to be your servants. And, Lord, you also said that we can do nothing without you. But with you, Father, you said that we can do all things. And, Lord, we come this morning, Lord, calling on the name of Jesus. Lord, we are calling on a name that's above all names. And, Lord, you also said that everything we need is in that name. And, Father, we are calling upon you this morning, Lord, to give us strength, Lord, where we are weak. Lord, we acknowledge, Father, that we miss the mark sometimes. But, Lord, we are thankful that you are still in the forgiving business. And, Lord, we ask for forgiveness, Lord. Help the Father, Lord, we pray right now, Lord, that we will love others, Lord, like you loved us. Lord, we pray that we will be patient with us, Father, like you are patient with us, Lord. Then, Father, we pray, Lord, for a sensitive world. Lord, we need your anointing, Lord, that we may face, Lord, the challenges that we face every day, Lord. But, Lord, you said with you, everything, Lord, is possible. And, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will be in the midst of the service this morning, Father. Lord, we need you, Lord, right now, Father. Lord, we pray for the less fortunate. Lord, we pray for the poor. Lord, there are many that's on that bed of affliction this morning. Lord, there could be us, Lord. But, Father, we have everything and feelings for them, Lord. Lord, we are praying for our pastor this morning. Continue, Lord, to anoint him. Lord, that he may feed us, Lord. And that he may kind of tenderly, Father, to do the chaplain work, Lord, at Santa Hospital. 
Lord, we pray for those, Lord, right now who refuse to accept your holy word. Lord, we come this morning, Heavenly Father. Lord, lift the nose up, Lord, that are burdened this morning. Lord, there are many that are bereaved this morning, Lord. Lord, we ask you to touch the Jackson family, Lord, and the laws, Lord, of their loved one. Lord, we pray for Anita, Lord. Lord, we pray for that family. We pray for our traveling grace, Father, back here. And Lord, once again, Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. Father, we give you glory. And Lord, we ask this prayer, Father. And these blessing, Lord, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Thank God and amen. amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Giving all reference and praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Philip A. Lewis, to Reverend Thomas, to Evangelist Quinn, to the deacons, to the sanctuary choir. Good morning to our Facebook friends, Instagram, YouTube listeners, and to our in-person New Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church family. We are live here at New Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church, 434 South Gravilla Avenue in the beautiful city of Inglewood, California, where the Reverend Dr. Philip A. Lewis is our pastor. We are happy that you joined us this morning in worship. Here are a few highlights of some upcoming events here at New Mount Pleasant. You can also find the schedule of events on our website at nmpmbc.com. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Please, please make plans to get your mammogram or any other cancer screenings. On Sunday, October 23rd, join our First Lady, Sister Miranda Lewis, as she spearheads the First Lady's Health Fair from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Meriwether Fellowship Hall. Amen. All health screenings are free. Amen. New Mount Pleasant invites each and every one of you to help us celebrate our pastor's eighth pastoral anniversary service. Pastor Lewis and First Lady Sister Miranda Lewis. The event will be a buying worship service with Greater Starlight Missionary Baptist Church where Reverend Prentice Lewis is pastor. The event will take place on November 13th at 10 a.m. Our theme, Everything's New for You, which is taken from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. The colors are navy blue and white. New Mount Pleasant members, you are asked to donate $25 to commemorate pastors' eight years of service. Also, a, presented, <clears throat> a percentage of the funds received will go towards our building fund. And this is for members only. $100 cash will be given to, as a gift, to the one who has the most guests in attendance. Amen. So let's start getting out those black books and invite everybody to come out and help celebrate our pastor's eighth and first lady's eighth year celebration. Anniversary dinner will be served after the service. For more information, you can contact our PAC members. PAC members, would you please stand so they'll know who to reach out to? Our PAC members, PAC team members, amen. We look forward to seeing you. We would like to wish everyone celebrating a birthday in October a happy birthday. Amen. Amen. We're asking that you peruse our Facebook page at nmpnbc.com for details of events on our weekly schedule of events. Amen. 
And remember and never forget, NMP is the place to be. Amen. At this time, I turn it over to our pastor. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, you can do better than that. Let's praise the Lord. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Didn't he wake you up this morning? Didn't he give you activity in your limbs? Eyes to see, ears to hear. Isn't God great? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. He is so good. He is so good, and he's so good that we're going to dedicate a baby this morning. Amen. Amen. Is the Sean family in the house and ready? Are they available? Or do we need to wait a little while longer? Amen. Bring them on in. Bring them on in. They're supposed to be in here. Amen. That's all right. Amen. And will my deaconess come forth with, okay, all right, yeah, as soon as they come in, amen. You know, it is a wonderful time of celebration when we dedicate a child back to the Lord, five minutes, five minutes. Okay, we can, we can deal with that. Amen. Amen. Um, well, what we're going to do, we're going to pray first. The Bible says the men ought to always pray. Amen. And not give up. Don't stop. How many of you know you need to always pray? Amen. How many of you got something that you need to pray for today? Amen. Amen. I, I want you to know this. You go pray. You go pray. God wants you to know that He is still in the prayer answering business. Come on, mother. He will answer answer prayer. I believe in answered prayer. Anybody believe in answered prayer? And here is the key to answered prayer. You have to believe that it, whatever you ask is already done. It's on the way. God will do it when you pray in his will. Jesus told us, whatever you ask in my name, it shall be done. Now, when we say in the name of Jesus, we're not just talking about hollering Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. But what the name Jesus means, let me, let me tell you his real name. His, his mama didn't name him Jesus. What? No, his mama didn't name him Jesus. She named him Yeshua. Can you say that? Say Yeshua. And, and, and Jesus is an English transliteration of the name Yeshua, it's a Hebrew name, and it means the Lord is my deliverer. The Lord is my savior. And that also implies he's my healer, he's my guide, he's everything that I need. And I want you to know that he will do what you If you just believe, anybody believe in today, God? Anybody believe in God today for something to happen? He will do it. I, I, I'm a witness. 
I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I've been, I ain't going to tell y'all what it is, but I have been praying and praying and praying and praying for something and the Lord answered. So those of you who need special prayer, you got to pray. You really want to be answered. Why don't you come on up right now? Amen. Sit up here. Amen. Want everyone else standing. Everyone standing. We're going to have our own youth pastor, Sister Kathy Thomas, lead us. Father God, Lord, we thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for who you are, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the things you have done, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the things you have covered, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for watching over our families, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for watching over our children, Lord. Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Father God, before we start asking you, Lord, we just want to realize, Lord, that you are good, Lord. And we just want to say thank you to you today, Lord. We want to say thank you, Lord, because you are so honored to be thankful, Lord. We are so honored, my God. We thank you, Lord. Father God, this morning, Lord, there might be someone, Lord, that's sick, Lord, and they couldn't get out of their bed, Lord. We ask, Lord, for healing power, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you go to the hospitals, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you go to the convalescent home, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you stop by somebody's home, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you cover them and heal them, Lord. Father God, we ask, Lord, that you stop by, Lord, just on the streets, Lord, where the homeless is, Lord. There might be someone that needs you, Lord. They might be sick in the body, Lord. They might be sick in the mind, Lord. But we know you are God that can do anything, Lord. So we ask, Lord, that you just touch right now, Lord. Father God, we thank you for your healing power, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you give them complete healing, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Father God, there might be someone, Lord, that's in the need of something, Lord. We ask, Lord, that if it's your will, that you grant it, Lord. Father God, there's somebody that might just don't know, Lord, that you are God all by yourself and you can do anything, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you touch right now, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you touch the bereavement families, Lord. There's many, Lord, that lost loved ones, Lord, behind gun violence, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you touch right now, Lord. Father God, there's many that lost some through accidents, Lord. But, Lord, we know, Lord, that you are a healer, Lord. You are a healer in mind. You are a healer in our soul, Lord. And, Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you just touch this morning, Lord. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your awesomeness, Lord. Lord, we thank you for watching over our children, Lord, as they go to school, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you just touch. And Father God, we ask, Lord, that you, Father God, just anoint everywhere that they go in the schoolhouse, Lord. Each and every door, each and every wall. We ask, Lord, that you just touch the teachers, the administrators, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you keep them safe. We ask, Lord, that you touch every bully today, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you touch every gang member today, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you just touch right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father God, we ask, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father God, that you just touch someone, Lord, that just don't know you, Lord, by your name, Lord. We ask, Lord, that their, your word go all over them, Lord. Father God, we ask that somebody be saved today, Lord. Father God, we ask, Lord, that you touch our pastor today, Lord, and his wife and his family today, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you touch New Mount Pleasant as a whole, Lord. Father God, we thank you and we praise you this morning, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you just touch, Lord. Father God, we thank you. 
Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen. You, Lord, go in peace knowing that God has already answered your prayer. Ah, thank you. He's able. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Anybody know he's able? to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask or even imagine. He's able. I don't care what you're going through right now. Somebody say, somebody say amen. On Friday evening, it looked real dark for the disciples. Some folk thought it looked real dark for Jesus, and it did. But Jesus knew something that none of the others knew. He said, Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming. We're going to ask the Shine family to come on forth and bring this child. It's lovely. And I'm going to ask the godparents to come forth. Mother Clark, where's Mother Clark? Where's your mom? Come on up here. Come on up here, Mother. There she is. There she is. She want to come? Okay, she okay? All right. Thank you. Champ. Cameron. This is Cameron Curtis Shan. Amen, the son of Rohan and Chanel Shane. Amen. We dedicate him back to the Lord. Lord, may your spirit rest upon him. May your glory rest upon him. May these parents and these God parents Raise him, nurture him in the fear and admonition of Almighty God. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Behold, Cameron, the only thing greater than thyself. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We thank you for Cameron. We thank you for these parents, Rohan and Chanel. We thank you for these God parents. Lord God, we charge them now. They, they would all raise him in the fear that is the reverence and admonition of your way your truth, and your life. Lord, we thank you for him. And we ask that all these church members, this congregation who was witnesses here today, all join in and help this young family to raise this beautiful baby boy. And we pray it in the mighty matchless name, nature, 
and character of Jesus the Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. And for his glory, we all say together, amen. 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 Give them a round of applause. Hold on. Hold on. We have something here for you. Let me do this. It's a certificate of dedication that certifies that Cameron Curtis Shan, the child of Rohan and Chanel Shan, born on May 27th, 2022 in the city of Victorville, California, was prayerfully presented to the Lord in dedication. Amen. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. On this second day of October at the New Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church, amen, Inglewood, California, amen, Pastor Philip A. Lewis, Reverend Dr. Philip A. Lewis, pastor, amen, amen, amen. Be blessed. Love you, God. Come on, let's get a picture, y'all. Come on, Kevin. Come on, you find you find some of that. All right. Bless you all. Bless you. Thank you. Oh, okay, this is for them. Hold on.
when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can dance, 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 dance,
You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely. My big mama used to say, sure enough. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I was sitting in my office of prayer, pondering, and preparation this week, I was there in the study, and I heard a knock at the door of my mind. And I looked up, and there dressed in his shepherd's regalia stood David. And David started speaking to me. David said, Phil, I've come to your office of prayer preparation and pondering to let you know and see some scenes from my spiritual scrapbook. Y'all know what a scrapbook is, right? Scrapbook is the thing where you put together and you have pictures. You have mementos and things that show you what happened. And David said, I have some pictures, some photos, and mementos of my life. And when I was a young boy, I was a shepherd boy. And I watched over my father's sheep. And David said, and I came to tell you, Phil, that that's what God is like. God is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And somebody has called this psalm the nightingale of the psalm. Some have called it the little Bible. Others called it the Christian's checkbook. And all of these are good, but it seems that the first expresses itself best, for they say the nightingale is the sweetest singing bird of all. And surely this psalm is the sweetest of all songs, perhaps there's no more familiar chapter in the whole Bible. Uh, it only has six verses. But when you try to think about the depth of those six verses, it doesn't seem a man so long. And I dare say there are another six verses in the Bible around which cluster so many precious promises. Um, for, um, a little girl was trying to quote that first verse, and she said, the Lord is my shepherd. That is all I want. <laughs> now, you may laugh at that, but that's how we should all feel. The Lord is my shepherd, and that's all I want because that's all I need. She says, I shall not want. You see, the Lord is your shepherd, and that's all you want, and how true that is. That's all we need, and far more than we could ever make use of. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, for my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. In Christ Jesus, for your Lord, the Father knoweth what things you have need of before you even ask him. Amen. And I want you to look, look at that first verse. You see where it says, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Now look at the word is. The word is is in italic. And whenever the translators would uh, would, they, would, they needed to make something clearer 
what they would do is they would insert a word, and they put that in italics because that word is not in the original Hebrew. It does not say, the Lord is my shepherd. It says simply, the Lord my shepherd. David uses the first personal pronoun. He's my shepherd. I don't know about everybody else, but the Lord is my shepherd. He wants you to know that the Lord watches over me, and you ought to take that for yourself. The Lord, my shepherd. It says, Jehovah Rohi, my shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is, God is the essential one. He is the one. Jesus says, I lay down my life. For the sheep. Why? Because I'm the good shepherd. And, and, and if I was to put a tag on this text this morning, I would call it, a sheep testifies. A sheep testifies today. He, 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 David is testifying this morning. He, he's testifying. And so when, when you testify, first of all, when you testify, you exalt the shepherd. David says, the Lord, the Lord. Somebody say, the Lord. the Lord. And notice David uses, when you see that word, Lord, and you'll notice it's in all caps. Am I right? It's in all capitals. And whenever you see the word, Lord, in all capitals, you'll know that that's the same name that God used when he told Moses who he was and when Moses asked him when I go to the children of Israel and they asked who sent me who shall I say sent me he said tell them I am that I am sent you tell them that I will be who I will be sent you the Jehovah amen Yahweh sent you and Jehovah Jehovah Yahweh Yahweh that, that name is made from three different names, amen? It, 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 it comes from three different names. It means um, Yehi, amen, I am, or I was, I am, I be, amen, and Hove, I am, right now, I is. Amen. Yeah, yeah, they spoke Ebonics back then. I is right now. And, and, and Yaha, which means I be, I am becoming. And so those three words make up the word Yehovah. Somebody say Yehovah. Yehovah. That, and he is the one who is being, who is becoming. And he's becoming and becoming and becoming in you until you become that word of God. He lives out himself within you. He says, I am the great I am. I am the I will be who I will be forever and ever and ever until you become the word of God yourself. Oh, that should have shouted you just then. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God knows. God is. And God, amen, wants, is going to be in your life. Then he said, look at what the shepherd does. He talks about the shepherd. He talks about here the shepherd and what the shepherd does. The shepherd is, uh, he's exalted there. He is Jehovah Rohi, the shepherd. He is Jehovah Jireh, the provider. He is the Jehovah Shalom, our peace. He is the Jehovah Rapha, my healer, and my the Jehovah Sid Canoe, my righteousness. The Jehovah Shammah, the God who is there. The Jehovah Nisi, my banner. The Jehovah M. Kadesh, my sanctifier. The Jehovah El Elyon, the most high. 
That's his nature. But what we experience, what the sheep experience, he talks about what he experienced. He experienced a personal relationship with God. When this, he's my shepherd, as I said. He experienced a precious relationship with God. I shall not want, I have no need of anything because the Lord, <coughs> somebody say the Lord is my shepherd. And he, he provides leadership. What does it say there? He leads me beside the still waters. He, 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 um, he puts me, he, he makes me to lay down in green pastures. Now that's, that's something, isn't it? Because what would happen when the shepherd was tending to the sheep and they were going through and the, what, what the shepherd would do, he knew the sheep were going to get tired because he knew that they had quite a journey to go on. So what he'd do, he'd take the shepherd's crook and he'd bend them at the back of the knee and he'd press them down on the head and make them lay down. Anybody here the Lord ever had to make you lay down? Anybody here ever had an unexpected illness make you lay down? He had to make you chill, take a chill pill and stop for a while and make you lay down. And where he laid you down in a bunch of dirt, he laid you down in green pasture. Green pastures led you that were beside the still waters. Now, many people think that when you see that, that you think of sheep lapping up the water. But the water wouldn't be still if the sheep were lapping them up. Because there would be waves from the sheep lapping up the sheep, lapping up the water. But what God does, he lays you in the green grass that are beside the still waters and there's a breeze that come off those still waters that refresh the sheep. He, it, it's not about eating and drinking, but it's about refreshment. Now, how do I know that? Because that, after that it said, he what? He restores my soul. It's about refreshment. It's about restoration. It's about you resting in him and being restored. If somebody in here, the Lord wants to restore you right now. The Lord wants to bring you back right now. He restores my soul. What that simply means, he gives me my soul back. He gives you your soul back. Ain't that something? God, when you are giving and giving and giving. Yeah. He needs to pour back into you. Yeah. And so as you rest mm -hmm. beside the still waters, as, as the Lord refreshes you, yeah. he gives you your soul back. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, look, 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 look at that. Look at it, look at it, look at it. He leads me. Somebody say, he leads me. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Wow. Wow. He, he starts to talk about himself. He said he, lead, he leads me in the paths of righteousness. Notice the path comes from a word that means circuit or orbit. He, God is always leading you in a path that goes somewhere. He's yeah. trying to lead you into right useness. Righteousness just don't mean you look down your nose at everybody else and try to tell them how they ought to live your life. What righteousness means is, let, let me break that down, right useness that you would be used rightly by God. 
that God would use you rightly. You don't get off. You're not supposed to come and sit up under preaching and teaching Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday night after Wednesday night, yeah. Thursday afternoon after Thursday afternoon, yeah. Yeah. just to sit up and thank you, Q, yeah. and thank you, Holy. Yeah. You're supposed to go and pass it on to someone else. You got to learn to be used rightly. Quit tripping. That's why people don't come to church. Because they see a whole bunch of saints, so-called saints, up in here who are judgmental and talk. All of us used to be something. When I was a young man, I'd go out on Saturday night, I'd get so, and I'd be singing in the nightclubs, I'd get so toa, but I, on Sunday morning, I'd be in the choir like this. <laughs> be leaning so far back, you think I was in the mix. To the point of you sitting here yeah. is to go forth and be used rightly by God. Yeah. Right now, it is not the pastor that's pouring into you. It is God. The pastor is nothing but a conduit, yeah. a vessel through whom the Holy Spirit flows to you. You, in turn, go and allow the Spirit to flow through you into someone else. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And I said that name, we talk about that name and think that Jesus is like saying abracadabra, hocus pocus. No. No, 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 no. no. The name of Jesus means to live within his character, yeah. to live within his nature, yeah. to become his very being. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Preach, black man. Preach. Preach. Thank you, Lord. I believe I will. Amen. Amen. So, here, look at this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, yeah. they comfort me. Yeah. In, in the shepherd's power, he, he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, shadows are not real. But they're, they're a reflection of something real. The shadow itself cannot hurt you. It's the shadow of death. Can we all go physically die, but we're not going to really die. Amen. Those who are believers Amen. are never going to die. Amen. 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 But, but when physical death comes upon you, yeah. that's the shadow yeah. 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 of death. But you don't have to fear any evil. You don't have to fear anything. Why? Because the shepherd, Jesus, is with us. And then he says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort. Yeah. Now, the shepherd had a rod, and it was, it, 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 the rod and the staff are the same stick. Yeah. Two different ends. Yeah. Amen. Now, you might hear some other theologians, they say something different, but on one end was a crook. Yeah. And the shepherd would use that yeah. to pull the yeah. sheep back in line. In the case of sheep, had, they'd go by they go off on a mountain. Sometimes the sheep fall over and get caught on the branch of the ship and could reach down, hook him up, and pull him up. God ever had to pull you up? He ever pulled you out of some stuff? 
Come on now, don't be play, don't play with me. I know the Lord done pulled somebody beside me out of some mess. He, he reached down with that. But the other end of the, of the staff, it was pointed, and it would keep away the enemy, the lions, the tigers, and bears. Oh, my. And he would stave off the enemy with the staff. Come here, Moses. Moses lifted up his staff over the Red Sea. And the Red Sea parted. And he guided the children of Israel through. But with the rod, the other side of it. They say that when Pharaoh and his army entered in chasing after him, Moses took the rod of God and waved it over and the sea came back together. And the Bible says, I heard a song say, Pharaoh's army drowned in the Red Sea. Didn't it happen? Yes, it did. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Then it says, you prepare me a table. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. You prepare a table. God, I told you he had some photos and mementos. I told you about a bunch of the photos, but here, here's a memento. He had a, the shepherd would carry a little sack there, and in the sack was some fodder and some feed, and he would prepare the table for the sheep in the wilderness. He'd put a little feed there, a little fodder there, and say, come on, come on. It's time to eat. Now, now they, the sheep are eating and drinking in the middle of the wilderness. The lions, tigers, and bears are all around. They can see the sheep eating. They see you eating, but they, can't, they dare not mess with you because of the rod of God. You know what happens then? God becomes your tag team partner. Yeah. Y'all yeah, 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 know what tag team is, right? Y'all ever watch, uh, what is it, WWF? You know, when I was a kid, we watched uh, Hulk Hogan, and, yeah. and, 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 and but more recently, you watched The Rock, and you watched all these guys, and, and, and you know, you'll see one of them, they'll be getting whooped, and they'll be on, the, the guy be on the ground, be getting, but if the guy could just get, get, get to the corner, he jumps over <laughs> and whoops the guy to smithereens. Y'all know, uh, my, my brother's mother-in-law used to get mad if you told her that was fake, though. <laughs> God is your tag team partner. And all you have to do is lift up prayers. And he'll jump in and whoop your enemies. And your enemy is not people. It's Satan. Your enemy is not people. It's your flesh. Your enemy is not people, it's this world system. We going through some stuff right now. Foolishness. Evil seems to be winning, but don't you worry. God got your back. God is your tag team partner. God will take his rod and stave off the enemy. You just have to do what he told you to do. One of those things is vote. I, I think I need to say that right in the middle here. One of those things, you all need to vote. Amen. Your vote counts. That's a little commercial I give. Amen. Your vote does count. And vote in accordance with your faith. Not the white evangelical faith. Amen. Because there's a problem with that. 
Because the white evangelicals have been the Ku Klux Klan. The white evangelicals have been the white citizens league. Amen. Amen. And I'm not teaching you racism. They were racist. They the racist ones. But you got to vote for what's right. It's right to treat every human being equally. God does. God said, all who would come, come. Come drink of the waters freely. I don't care if you're black, white, red, green, straight, gay, whatever you are, come. I'll do the changing if there need to be. Come. Jesus said, come to me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I told you to give you rest. Amen. So, amen. And then, he says, you anoint my head with oil. I think I told you a few weeks ago when I was a little boy, I fall down, I be out there running and playing. I fall down and hurt myself. I go to my big mama. I say, big mama, I got a soul. I got a soul, big mama. She say some stuff called. Campo Phoenix. Y'all remember that? Campo Phoenix. Campo Phoenix, it ain't much. It ain't much, but she take it and she put it on there and then she kiss it and she say, she say, Bev? I say, yeah, big mama, that's Bev. <laughs> God anoints your head with oil because sometimes you're a sheep and sometimes what'll happen, you'll be there with the other sheep, but you'll look over here and there's a berry bush. And you'll go to that berry bush, but you don't really know. The sheep don't know. I told you, sheep are dumb animals, right? You know sheep are dumb animals? You don't see sheep in Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus jumping through hoops and jumping through fire and all that kind of, that, uh, that kind of stuff. But, but, but the sheep will look at that berry bush and they say, I'm going to get that berry. But they don't know that behind every berry, there's a thorn. And so as they go, they get scratched. They get, they, they get messed up. So God needs to anoint your head with oil. Amen. Because you don't know. That's why Jesus was told, the, asked the Father, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I know you think, you say, oh, they know what they're doing. No, they don't. They don't understand the significance of what they're doing. And when you get to a point where people can come at you foul and you can remain calm and still love on them. Now, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say you're not going to. But the Holy Spirit will show you that they need prayer, that they need love. Amen. And get, get this, love is purposeful. Love is on purpose. Because when Jesus uses the word love, he uses the word agape, which means uh, intentional love. And it has to be intentional because they had acted so foul with you. Think about how foul they acted with Jesus. Yet he loved them. So much that he wept over the city of Jerusalem. The Lord is my shepherd. Then finally it says, surely. surely. Somebody say, show sure enough. Sure enough. Goodness, Goodness and mercy, and mercy shall, follow shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord. Forevermore. Come on, Willie. Let's wrap this thing up. We're going to dwell. Now, let me tell you something. At the beginning of a presidential campaign, everybody gets their Secret Service agents. Y'all saw January 6th. The Secret Service agents were even with the vice president. 
but I got some shown up. David says he got shown up. Secret service agent. He got goodness. He got mercy. They're the divine sheepdog. And they follow me all the days of my life. Yes, they do. Jesus says, I'm going to leave you with a helper, the Holy Spirit. I'm going to leave you with something the Greeks call the parakletos. And that means one that comes and walks alongside of you, holds you up on your leaning side. You might not know what a paraclete is, but I bet you know what a paramedic is. A paramedic when you're sick or when you've been injured, they will send you a paramedic and he will help get you to the divine doctor on time. He will fix you up so you can get to the hospital. That is a paramedic. You may not know what a paraclete is, but I bet you know what a parachute is. A parachute is when you jump up out of an airplane or jump from the sky the parachute won't stop you from falling, but it cushions your fall. Jesus, the Holy Ghost, goodness and mercy is my parachute. You may not know what a paraclete is, but I bet you know what a parasol is down south. Even here in Los Angeles, when it gets too hot and the sun's rays come down on you, you can open up an umbrella-like instrument. And that is your parasol. It keeps the damaging rays off of your body, off of your head. The Holy Ghost is my parasol. Ain't God all right? I said, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? One more thing. You may not know what a paraclete is, but I bet you know what a paraphrase is. Somebody might say something that's too difficult for you to understand. But what somebody will come along and do, they'll paraphrase it. A paraphrase is to help you to understand. The Holy Ghost will help you understand the Word of God. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Surely, surely. Goodness and mercy will follow me. Come on, goodness, follow me. Come on, mercy, follow me right into glory, right into the arms of Jesus. He will rescue you. He will deliver you. He will keep you safe. No matter what you may be going through, ain't he all right? Ain't Jesus all right? Is he your savior? Is he your glory? Say yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's my shepherd. He's my 
shepherd. He's my guide. He's my guard. I don't have need of anything. He's my protector. He's my provider. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Anybody here the Lord ever delivered you? Is there anybody here who been set free from something? Is there anybody here can witness to his goodness? Yeah. This is what I want you to do. Look back over your life and start writing down every time God has blessed you. Every time God has delivered you. I was looking and this makes me know that God is working. Sometimes I look at things I ain't supposed to look at. I was looking at my son and something he had been writing. He wrote everything he was thankful for. Thank you, Lord, that I was born into a righteous family. Thank you, Lord, that you got me out of this. I ain't gonna tell you what it was. Thank you, Lord, that you got me out of that. Thank you, Lord. The page was full, and he was still writing. Write it out so you can, it will increase your faith. God to do it. The Lord. Somebody say, the Lord. The I am. The I be. The I'm becoming, and I'm becoming, and I'm becoming, is my shepherd. God bless you and keep you. Everyone standing, everyone standing. If there's someone that wants to join with this local body, if there's someone that needs a church home, and I, let me say this, you need a place where you can come and be taught and be discipled and become a student of Jesus the Christ. Is there anyone here that does not have a church home today? Don't be shy. If you don't, come on, sit on this front row. We will, we, you don't even have to join this church. What we will do, we will take you and watch over you. We will teach you, amen, how to be a student of Jesus the Christ. He can change your life if you let him. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest to your soul. Come and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart. Come on, come, come, come. Drink of the waters. Drink wine and bread freely. It doesn't cost you anything but your willingness. Come. Those of you on Facebook, those of you watching on Facebook and YouTube, you can go to nmpmbc.org, join the join menu, tap that join menu, it'll drop down into a uh, registration form. Register with us. We will be in touch with you. We will teach you. We will show you the way of Christ. We will teach you how to be the truth of Christ. And we will teach you how to allow Christ to live his life through you. That is what a student of Christ is. Come on, come, come, come. You may be seated in the presence of God. How many of you know he, he really is able? Ah, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sheep testifies. Amen. Amen. It is time for tithes and offerings. <laughs> now, let me say something here. Tithes and offerings are biblical. We want to give God a tenth of all that we have. But today, I want to ask you for a little something more. We, we, and if you look outside, you'll see that we are redoing this facility. We paint it. We want to do the roof. We want to get windows. We want to redo the gym eventually because we want to turn our church into a community center. How many of y'all know the church should be a community center? A place where all people can come to get help, to help with their children. Amen. And so we have this great big facility here. But we got to fix it. takes a little money to fix it up. It takes money. Somebody touch your neighbor and say it takes money. I know y'all didn't say that. Touch the other neighbor and say it takes money. It does. That's just a reality. Amen. And so we're going to ask you, and let me, let me specify this. Above and beyond your tithe, don't stop your tithe. Give your tithe first. If you can't give above and beyond, don't worry about it. Give your tithe. Pay your tithe. One dime out of a dollar, it won't make you holler. Pay your time. Jimmy Davis wrote that song, y'all. But pay your tithes first. And if you can give above and beyond, please, ma'am, please, sir. There's some that can. Amen. Some can give thousands. Some can give a hundred. Some can give fifty. Some can give twenty. Some can give. 10, some give five, some give one. When I was a little boy, I'd give my quarters and my dime. We had them little sheets, we put our pennies in and fill them up, and we give those. Amen. Teaches a child how to give. And when you learn how to give, you receive. Amen. Anybody believe that? Amen. I, somebody said, I know it. I know that's right. And that, that's coming from my community activist, Ron Allen. I know he know, because he gives. That brother gives and gives and gives. Thank you, man. Amen. And so we want you to, we want to grow this church, not just in quantity, but in quality. Amen. I'm going to turn you over to these ushers and deacons. Hold on, let me give you a mic. Face the wall and follow the instructions of your usher. Thank you.
God we pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for these tithes and offerings. We thank you for those who gave and those who would have given but had not to give. Touch them, touch their finances, touch their spirit, their souls, that they may be able to give up on the next time. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer. We offer it up in the mighty matchless name, nature, and character of Jesus the Christ. We pray, and for his glory, we say, Amen. The blood that Jesus, this is a time of remembrance. We're not out of service yet. Remember, this is a very sacred time. This is a time when we remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and what he has done, his salvation, his life that he gave and poured out on Calvary's cross for each and every one of those who will believe. From day to day it will never 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 lose Ooh. Oh yeah 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting at the 23rd verse, reads as thus. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, <clears throat> he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We thank you for the wine. We thank you for the bread. And now, Lord, as we partake of it, allow us to remember all that you have done Allow us to remember that we are your disciples and your children. You are our shepherd. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for the bread and wine. Bless it as we partake of it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And the Bible says that after he took the bread and broke it, he said, take ye and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take ye and eat. like manner, he took the cup saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. Just do as often as you do. Do it in remembrance of me. Take ye and drink. Drink ye all of it. And the Bible said, they sung a hymn and they went out into the Mount of Olives. We're not going to go out there this morning, this afternoon. But we will stand and sing a hymn and be dismissed. Amen. Let the church. And the prayer. The prayer they sang that night went like this.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And now may the grace of God and the sweet, precious communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And let all God's children say, Amen. Let the church say, God has spoken. Okay.